And welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I would like to demonstrate a particular experiment that led up to J.J. Thomson's famous experiment that led to the discovery of the electron. And in this particular experiment, we're dealing with vacuum tubes and we're going to run some electricity through them. And to give you a little bit of history, uh, in the mid 1800s, these were known as Geissler tubes. And Geissler was a glass blower by trade and he was able to insert electrodes in vacuum tubes with different amounts of gas in them. And he was interested whether he could pass electricity through them. And so what we have here is a series of tubes and each of these tubes have mercury in them, mercury gas, but at different pressures. So we might start off at 5.5 kilopascals right down to 0.004 kilopascals. And the pressure is an indication of how much of that gas is in that tube. So over here we've got a fair amount of mercury gas and a low amount. And what we have done here is connect them to a voltage supply. Now what we want to do here is we want to connect them to a direct current, but we need a fairly high voltage. So in order to do that, we have an induction coil. And an induction coil in essence is just simply a transformer, a step up transformer. So the input is a uh, approximately 10, 9 to 10 volt input DC. And then we also have here a set, two coils here, and a primary coil and a secondary coil. And the secondary coil has a lot of little turns and we can step up the voltage to around 6,000 volts. And so we're gonna apply voltages across here because in order to get the effect that we're interested in, we need a fairly high voltage to run through these tubes. Now, some of you may be saying, hold on, isn't a transformer requiring an alternating current or an alternating supply to get the rapid change of flux? Um, and we've got DC here, but what we have here is a little tapper that turns on and off. So basically what it does is it has that rapid change of flux and so is able to cause induction to occur in the secondary coil and of course we can get a high voltage. So let's demonstrate what is going to happen and in order to do this I'm going to turn the lights down and, and get a bit closer so that we can actually see the effect of applying the same voltage across these tubes starting from a high pressure of mercury gas to a low pressure of mercury gas and why that was really um, of interest to the scientists in the 19th century and how that eventually led to the discussion of cathode rays and eventually into the discovery of the origin of cathode rays or namely that there were electrons. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at applying a voltage across each of the tubes. We're going to start from a high pressure so there's a lot of mercury gas into there and going to explain it as we go along as we progressively go down to the lowest pressure. So now looking at the first tube, you can see there isn't much glow going on whatsoever. What's really happening, as we know, of course, is that the cathode rays, which we now know are electrons, are basically stopped and considerably by the gas molecules that are in there. And because the energy of the electrons isn't actually absorbed by the outer shells of the gas molecules, we're not getting any light released. So let's jump down now to the next pressure. So Initially, we were at 5.5 kilopascals. We're now, now jumping down to 1.3 kilopascals. So there is a, a significant reduction in pressure. So now you can see a glow. So what is happening is that as the pressure decreases, some of the energy of the electrons is causing the electrons in the mercury to get excited and then therefore release some light. And so we're getting this lovely glow. I'm now jumping down even to a low pressure again. In this case, we've jumped down to 0.5 kilopascals. So we have again a reduction in pressure again. And now you're getting a really nice glow going on as a lot of uh, electrons in the mercury are getting excited. So you can clearly see there is a relationship between the pressure and the amount of glow that we get across. So the high pressures don't have a lot of glow, but now as we go down to pressures uh, that are significantly lower, in other words, the amount of gas is less, we're getting a much uh, considerable glow. And if we zoom out, we can actually see it. We're now going to jump down to a lower pressure again, 
And in this case, we have 0.4 kilopascals, so half the pressure of the previous tube. So as you can see, we have a much, much brighter tube. And if you look very carefully, we're getting these, this banding going on. That banding is known, often referred to as striations, and they are regions of dark space and bright space and, and regions of positive banding where the electrons are getting different amounts of energy. We won't go into the full physics of the banding, but what's important to note here is, is that these striations is really an effect of the energy of the electrons as they pass through this tube, as I said, called the Geissler tube. We're now going to down again to a lower pressure still, and you will notice there in this case, we're now getting a glow. There is some induction effect occurring in our previous tube, um, but our previous tube is actually disconnected. But the thing is, is that we're getting some glow here, but we're getting a significant drop in pressure of gas. So the glow is probably due to other effects, which I'll talk to you about in a second. We're now going to the very last tube. And if you look very carefully, and actually I can't see it with the naked eye, but my camera is picking it up. In the last tube, you're getting a little bit of a glow. Now again, remember that tube that you see on the left-hand side is a, most likely a, a product of induction. But when uh, scientists were working with these tubes in the 1800s, they discovered that the base uh, was glowing probably a bit more significantly than mine. And they were wondering, what is this ray that's causing this fluorescence down the bottom? And what is causing this glow? Because now, because we have so little gas, clearly there's something else going on here. Some stream must be passing from the cathode to the anode. And the discussion really was, what is the nature of these rays? And they were called cathode rays because they came from the cathode uh, terminal. Of course, that promoted a whole bunch of discussion. Was this cathode ray made up of particles? Uh, and w subsequent experiments, as I explained in my video uh, previously, they suggested that they were particulate in nature and had a charge, though others were of the opinion that they were a form of electromagnetic radiation. This was conclusively uh, determined by J.J. Thompson's experiment, where he was able to determine both the velocity and the charge to mass ratio, and as a result, had discovered or made the discovery of the electron. So that is the demonstration on the Geissler tubes in their varying pressures of mercury gas. Other experiments that could be performed in this similar setup is looking at different gases, and chemists may be particularly interested because the colour is actually an indicator of the element that is in the tubes. But in this case, we're using this as an experiment to show you the precursor to the discovery of the electron. I hope that's helped you. Please like the video if it's helpful, and uh, by all means share if you want to see more of my videos to present physics from a high school physics perspective. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.